Because what does he just tell us in Leviticus 26? If you return to him, does God ever change? God is holy. He is over here. He is separate from us, isn't he? And he is drawing us to him. So if somebody is in dire, dire need, instead of just saying, well, I pray that you get healed and just walk off and just leave it at that, did I help that person? I did not. What is my job as a believer? It's to bring them into the, the light. How can I bring them into the light if I just pray for them and send them on their way? But if you're a righteous person, it says here, you will have wonderful results. But it says for them, if they have sinned. That's not for you to judge them. But we need for them to understand. Is there sin in your life? It doesn't say that. It says if you yourself are a righteous person and you pray for that person, there will be wonderful results. Okay, but then if that person goes off and continues their life at the way they were living it? Another righteous person. <laughs> okay, so then, and so based on that circumstance, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going from circumstance to circumstance because what our, my understanding is I'm to, we're to bring people into the light. And what is light? His kingdom truth. is truth. It's walking in a hud with, with the Father, correct? Right. By following His commandments or whatever. So, Based on this, yes, it says that. But did I help that man? Because if I sit there and I am doing something that is, that is not observant, that is stiff-necked to the Father, what does it say in 26 further on? Is it? So I just put a Band-Aid, and as soon as that Band-Aid falls off, which won't be long, he's going to be in the same shape that he was. Or worse. Or worse. So, back to being Love. loving and not judging. I'm not going to, I don't know if the person is sin or not. How are, is your relationship with the Father? How is it? Have you thought about it? Have you taken His Word and shined it in on your life? Or are you running from the Father right now? Can I help you return to Him? Do you need some help? Do you mean to sit and pray with you and read with you and, and walk through Scripture with you? I'd love to do that. Or do you just want me to pray for you? Well, you always got to find out where they are on their walk. So all I'm saying is I think that we've taken this prayer to a point of we just want results. Just give us give me a result. But we don't want we just want to put band-aids on things. And I'm not saying that's wrong. We need to pray for people. Right? Yeah, because it says confess your sins to one another. And confess your sins to one another. But also, I'm just just a thought. So next time somebody prays for you, you might ask them, how's your walk with with God? How are you doing with that? Do you have a relationship with him? Especially because it finishes and it says, the effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. So what's a righteous man? What's our definition of righteous, especially in the New Testament? Yeah. Torah. Righteousness. Torahless. Torah. Follower. Yeah. Unrighteous. Torahless. Some of the things that we have to be real careful from is trying to tell God how to run them. Mm -hmm. And I've been guilty of, you know, hey God, I, we've got a few things we've got to iron out here, and here's how I want it done. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't seem to work out real good. I, I'm very, I don't have near the knowledge and understanding that he has, and I need to humble myself and put my prayers up. But let him fix it the way he wants to fix it, not how I want him to fix it. Right. And that's how, that's hard. I mean, that's hard for me. An elder should be a righteous man. Yes, he should be. But I thought we were righteous by the blood of Yeshua. That's right. Yeshua is our righteous man. He is. He is. 
But he also he also commands us to walk in obedience, doesn't he? Yeah, but everything you do is filled with wrath. It's not by works. It's by the heart. What's your heart? What's the heart? That's all he's asking. So What's your one of the differences between, in Romans, where Paul talks about observing the commands and keeping the commands. Yeah. As he says, those who keep the commands will be declared righteous in the end. But no one is declared righteous by observing the commands. Observe and keep are two completely different Greek words. Observing is trying to do it on your own, trying to figure out your own path, your own thing. Keeping it is guarding it, being submissive to him, and then he'll just show you the way. But if you're submissive to him in everything, then you can walk in his way. He'll show you what to do, and at the end, you know, what? <coughs> What's 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 a heart desire? In other words, do you have a little checklist you get up every morning that says, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. Can't do that. That's observing. I can do that. <laughs> I don't want to live that way. I want to live as, oh, that pleases you, that pleases you, that pleases you, that pleases you. Wow. Oh, man, I didn't please you too well there, did I, today? I'm sorry. But I'll try better. Is, do you see the difference in the heart? And the, yeah. you see that difference? Now, yeah, if somebody comes in, well, y'all are under the law. Well, yeah, if I'm sitting there going, I can't do that, and I can't do that, and I can't do that, there's no freedom whatsoever. <laughs> but there's freedom in, man, that pleased him today. Oh, that pleased him today. That pleased him today. That's a difference. That's a child. That's a son. That's a relationship. That's like bringing your flowers to your wife because she knows she loves flowers. And husbands do it on a day that she doesn't expect it. So Mother's Day's coming up. So get, be, still be nice, but do it on some day that she doesn't expect it too. That's even better. You mean like Monday instead of Sunday? Oh, no, sorry. Not necessarily. Yes, friend. Well, I think the contradiction that people don't really they think it kind of contradicts itself, but it doesn't. What it is is that the law does not save you, but the no. law can condemn you. If you break the law, you are condemned. But if you, by obeying the law, it does not save you. You, you still have to obey it, though, to keep from being condemned. Mm. But you obey it because you know what to do. That's your heart. That's your heart. Yeah, it's not because you have to. It's because you want to. Want to. Because you love them and you love them. Right. The difference of like when we grew up, grew up in home, and mom said, "Clean your room." You had to. Because you had to. <laughs> and did you do that great of a job? No. But then you have those children who clean their room, and they come back and they grab you by the shoulder and says, "Man, look at my room." Why did they clean their room that well? Because they knew that it would please mom. We had a show of <laughs> Trust me, when I was a teenager, even the bugs came out saying, we can't live like this. <laughs> Please. You know. I want to touch on one thing. I wish Larry Lambert was here about the prayers of a righteous man. Yeah. Um, he's got some great testimony about a, a man at work who has walked away from God completely as Buddhas, all this kind of stuff, but sees Larry's life and sees how he lives. And it's kind of like, hmm, something's different there. He said two separate instances where he told Larry if something was going on in his life. So I said, okay. Well, if you'd like, I'll pray for that. And he did pray specific prayers in both instances. And the first one, it happened exactly the way Larry prayed. And the guy said, Okay, that's kind of weird. You know, not really coincidental, but something eh, put a, a little seed of doubt in his mind in, in his walk. Um, about maybe two or three weeks ago, the guy's uh, his wife's dog took off from an apartment complex somewhere or a house not far away. And his wife really loved the dog, and he was broken up and worried and concerned. And he told Larry about it, and Larry said, Well, let's pray about it. And so he said, Father, we know, you know his wife loves his dog. Would you have the person who has it bring it back? Well, Larry, or the, the guy and his wife used to live in some apartments, and they moved to a house a little bit ago. 
the dog took off from the house, went back to the apartment complex, to the apartment where they used to live. The girl at the apartment says, oh, cool, a dog. She takes it in, washes him, cleans him up, calls her mom and says, mom, guess what? I found a dog and I'm going to keep it. It's really, really cute. And she started describing it. The mom says, I know where that dog belongs. Because mom lives two doors down wow. from the guy and his wife. So she goes over to her daughter's apartment, gets the dog, and they bring it back. Exactly like Larry had prayed. And the guy says, okay, I've got two witnesses. Because Larry's sharing some things about it. He says, we need to talk. We need to work in next. Larry says, I'll be there tomorrow. He's like, okay, I'll meet you here. Oh, crap, I'm off tomorrow. The guy was upset he was going to be off work because he couldn't talk to Larry that day at work. So the prayers of a righteous man. So in that instance, but what's it drawing this man to? Exactly. It's drawing him to the light. That's cool. That is cool. Awesome, awesome that is awesome. It's about time to wrap up. For homework reading, if you don't know it. Homework. <laughs> Wait, you're the substitute. Homework. You need to read 2 Kings 17, the whole chapter, because this is what happens when you do not do what God says. And this is the, the children of Israel. And one thing I'll point out real quick, and starting in verse 7 at the end, it says, They worshipped other gods and followed the practice of the nations the Lord had driven out before them, as well as the practices that the kings of Israel had introduced. And then it goes on to say, so he gives a good reason. I mean, you do not want to be in a court case with the Father. 2 <laughs> Kings 17. 2 Kings 17. The whole chapter. In the court case with the Father, Rico will talk about that next week. Man, you don't, you don't win. Mm -hmm. yeah, but in verse 32, you, you listen to this. They worshipped the Lord, but they also appointed all sorts of their own people to officiate for them as priests in the shrines of the high places. They worshipped the Lord, but they also served their gods in the accordance with the customs of the nations from which they had been brought. To this day, they persist in their former practices. So that goes back to my question of James 5. Maybe there's a lot of chaos in our life because we need to look at the practices and are we lining up with the scripture? When we pray for somebody. So remember, we don't condemn, but we ask, are you following the Father? Are you lining up with his word? I was just going to say, you know what it says, and followed their laws. I work at a bank, and it blew me away. About a week ago, I was in a conference uh, meeting with the whole bank, and the CEO gets up in front of everybody, and he says, "Well, I've been in Washington just to let y'all know where I've been. We're been, you know, with the lobbyists for the bankers and blah blah because of all the stuff that's going on in the government." And he said, "Just to give you a perspective, he said the Frank Dodd Act, which governs mortgages and banking, has seven million words in it." He said, the Bible has a little over 700,000 words in it. He said, but we have to follow this law to the T, or we could be shut down as a bank in our mortgage facility. And da, 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 da. While he's saying this, I'm going, okay. They can't follow the law of God, but we can follow one act in banking for mortgage that has 7 million words. Wow. There is something wrong with this country. You know, I mean, that just right there woke me up to, wow, you know, here he has this Torah that he wants us to follow that's not this difficult that you have to reach up into the heavens to get it, and we can't supposedly follow that. I've had people say, I'm not into that legalism. Next time I hear that, I'm going to say, um, do you know what the Frank Dodd Act is? Just to give you a little example, and do you follow the United States of America laws? Because we are into legalism in this country, and it's like, it's their way or the highway, or you can be thrown in jail or no telling what in the future. But it really opened my eyes to see seven million words in one law that the government has in banking. It's pretty crazy. And that changes often. Yeah, he said every, they have to, I talked to the lady in mortgage after all of this, I went to her and I said, I just couldn't believe that. I mean, how do you know that you're following the law? Because you know me. <laughs> and she goes, well, 
We have to look every day to see if we're breaking the law or not. Like, man. I know. And so no tell them what's in there that they don't even realize they're, yeah. they're going against. Them. So let's wrap up. Just real quick. So what I glean from this is this. If my relationship with the Father is well, I will be doing well because He will bless me. If my relationship is rocky, it's most likely that I have caused it to be rocky by my stiff neck and hard-headedness. And I need to return to Him. So with that said, it's a little after three, so I wanted to end this up so we can have good fellowship today. So, most gracious, I